So digital technology is expected to transform society for the better, and yet it seems to be leaving some demographics like the elderly, like me, and those without internet access behind. Here for the discussion is Dr. Nadine Barrett Maitland, and she's a senior lecturer in the School of Computing and Information Technology at the University of Technology. Good morning. Jamaica. Good morning. Beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> they might have Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Doc. <laughs> Even though he does correct me and said Jamaica, and we're talking about this, this is not just about Jamaica. No. Well, this is no. worldwide. We're, we're, Internationally. Uh, International. But let's talk about Jamaica. Um, whew. So I know there are areas, because I found that strange that there are areas that just do have no Wi-Fi access, period. Yes. Um, is it widespread, though, or is it just little pockets we're talking about? I think the COVID-19 situation, especially as it relates to schools, I think that was a very good picture of where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, there are areas that we saw persons have to be walking at far away um, in order just to connect using their devices like this, just to connect to the internet. There were persons that could not attend school any at all. Even at the universities, there were students, I have a student that he, he, he stopped and he called and he said, Miss, even when I go into the town, I could not download the, the, the content to study. So he's now like two years behind. Wow. Um, because he, he only had about three modules left to complete his degree. Mm -hmm. And he's now, he has to do over about a year or maybe mm -hmm. more. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is real. It is real. Um, we have seen, though, a push by the government yes, to do. say they, they are putting Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi access in towns and so on. I, I, when I looked at it yesterday afternoon, I realized that we have 755 districts in Jamaica. Now, um, they are putting in free Wi-Fi, the Ministry of... Uh, we're, yeah. Honorable Darrell Vaz yeah. is, and they are looking at 199. That looks like, to me, that is like one fourth. 199 of out of 700. 50 districts, you know. So they are saying, but, but we are not sure because the data doesn't show how many deep rural districts we have. And I think the persons in those areas have a greater challenge. Okay. So that was my those. next question. Is this a really, is this a rural versus urban issue? Yes, it is. Okay. So I think so. Um, the data, that's what it's showing. And worldwide, mm -hmm. persons living in rural areas have these challenges. About 47% of the Jamaican population lives in rural parishes. That, no, no. So that is saying that's here we are. Oh, yes, that, yeah, but, but you, we are not suggesting that all that 47% do have Wi-Fi. No, okay. but a large percentage of them don't. And, and, and not, not uh, remember now, the digital economy and the did and having access to certain things. Mm -hmm. um, some people, they are, they are just using um, social media. Yep. Remember, to, to, to do certain things, you'll need certain... Yeah, um, Doc, isn't some of these instruments, too? It's not that them do have Wi-Fi, them do have the instrument to connect, isn't it? That part of it? Yes, well, actually, instrument to a lesser extent, but once you have a smartphone, and most of us have smartphones, there's an influx of smartphones in developing countries and in Jamaica. If you check them out, persons who mm -hmm. have smartphones, penetration, penetration is but, very But high. even I, I noted during COVID, because I was involved in a lot of outreach that was bringing tablets into the schools. Right. The challenge was that even when the children had access to the tablets and the teachers had access to the tablets, they couldn't connect. So yes. connectivity is, the, is at is the real one crux of, yes. of the issue. Yes. So as the government works to, to incrementally address that problem, what other issues do we have in terms of, for example, digital literacy? Yes. Right? Yeah. So access is one thing. But again, if you have the tool and you cannot use, use the tool, yeah. then the tool is a dead weight in your hand. Makes no sense. So how are we addressing so, that? Well, I am not sure how we are addressing it as a country, but I could suggest yes, that we have, um, for example, we have university students who could do internships in these areas and help to, you know, teach people how to do it. Many of us are literate those are in those areas. We could also um, support our community and so forth. And we need wider um, sensitization of persons as it relates to these things because persons who are digitally excluded or illiterate digitally, 
they will have problems. So when we, as we look at even many health um, institutions are trying to go online and so on, these are financial institutions, tri financial institutions <clears throat> and our financial institutions also need to ensure that people trust them. Mm -hmm. Because even when we have these things, if people don't trust using it. So for example, we have a lot of challenges with the banks on a mountain and so on. In order for the, for the digital economy to grow, we must in, in, increase trust. It's so, so what are we looking at in terms of implications if we don't uh, address this divide? Well, <laughs> we are going to find some persons will be left behind. And, and so, is this is a particular demographic? Yes. Older folks? Not only older okay. folks, persons with disabilities, okay. low income, unemployment. Some of these things, people cannot pay their, their fee for a Wi-Fi connection, right? Um, persons, there were a lot of some support. Uh, there was a lot of support in, in, in COVID because, for example, I took a child in my home and kept that child for the entire year, or else that child would not have gone to school. So I had to become a parent for that child. Congrats. Right, so you have several persons who would have done that. So um, I'm talking about nationalism. People, you know, we have to look at where we are and where we want to go. So you're saying, we can you're kind of saying to the government, free up the Wi-Fi right across. Right, and, and, and um, do it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> because we have, we have too many times we hear that this will be, so 101 of the 199 projected um, communities um, is now with Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi, um, has a 2023. We are not sure where they are. When we are finished with that, let us move and let us move with alacrity yep. and ensure that persons, and not only do they have Wi-Fi, but we educate them on how to use these. Um, Important. Thanks for coming. All the very best for the holidays to you and your family. Thank you. Yeah, and same to you. Thanks, Thanks for having Sarah. me. Sit with us for a while. Yeah. Dr. Nadine Barrett Maitland, Senior Lecturer in the School of Computing and Information Technology at the University of Technology. All right. Jamaica. Up, yeah, Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> up next, folks, catching up with a 2024 2025 Schwarzman Scholar. What that is? Well, we're going to find out when we come back. Or who that is. Stay with us. Super. Is it? Is she?